breaking news. Those coronavirus evacuation flights landing at two Air Force bases here in the U.S. this morning, carrying hundreds of Americans who were quarantined on that Diamond Princess cruise ship in Japan. And we know at least 14 people who flew on those planes are battling coronavirus. All those passengers face an additional two-week quarantine amid growing fears about the virus spreading across the globe. So far, there have been more than 71,000 cases and 1,700 deaths. But we start with the coronavirus and the new evacuation flights back to the U.S. overnight that have nearly doubled the diagnosed cases of the virus in this country. American cruise ship passengers freed from their floating isolation in Japan, only to face prolonged quarantine here at home, including some who've now come to learn they are infected with the virus. Their arrival comes as the number of worldwide cases spikes, along with economic losses. Apple among the American companies now feeling the impact. Our Miguel Almaguer reports. Under heavy guard, the largest cluster of Americans infected with the coronavirus arrived in the U.S. today, now headed for treatment. The 14 sick passengers isolated on their flights in biocontainment pods, kept clear of the more than 300 others on two emergency charters. We're on the plane, and uh, that's a good feeling. U.S. citizens like the Moleskis will now spend at least two weeks in quarantine after just spending 14 days in isolation on the Diamond Princess cruise ship off the coast of It's impossible to predict which direction this epidemic will take. We're concerned about the levels of rumor and misinformation that are hampering the response. The WHO says false information about prevention measures or fake so-called cures are potentially harmful to public health. It's using the hashtag know the facts to dispel some of the most dangerous rumors such as Concerns that pets can spread the coronavirus to people. There's no published evidence of that. Another fake fact that it's unsafe to receive packages from China. Or that sesame oil, garlic, or gargling mouthwash can protect you. No evidence of that either. Or that inhaling smoke and gas from fireworks can kill the virus. Definitely don't do with the number of cases in China now soaring above 70,000 and the death toll approaching 2,000, the virus is spreading to more corners of the world. Officials in Hawaii confirming an infected Japanese couple spent time in Honolulu's packed tourist district, staying in a popular hotel. Our focus is who this person might have sit, sat down with, talk, had conversation with. An economic toll is also rippling around the world. So coronavirus is a massive story. Should we be panicking? Let's have a look first at the number of cases that we've seen starting from day one of the epidemic or mm -hmm. when China first reported it to the World Health Organization. And let's compare it to the last famous epidemic, SARS. The number of SARS cases stayed kind of low and then stabilized at around... 10,000. So after about 176 days, it's just under 10,000. And, and again, like you said, everyone was panicked about SARS. And rightly so, because it had very high fatality rate. It did. And then let's look at how coronavirus, COVID-19, compares to that. So again, we start from the first recognised case. Yeah, so I can see from this, there is cause for concern. Yeah, you know, that's well over 60,000 after, you know, 60, 70 days compared to under 10,000 after 176. Yeah. I counter to this that still the number of deaths is very low, especially compared to SARS. We're looking at a mortality rate of around 2%. It's more in a range, but it's still at around 1,500, around that. So it's very, very low. OK, so you're saying, yes, this the cases line may look scary, but the yeah. deaths line is not... So it's not anything to be too worried about. Yeah. I mean, by comparison, for example, it's estimated that around 60,000 people die from seasonal flu in the US alone every year. At least 15 children died in Haiti when a fire swept through an orphanage on the outskirts of the country's capital. 
Authorities say this orphanage was operated by a U.S. religious group based in Pennsylvania. This fire began Thursday night. A child care worker at the home says it took about 90 minutes for firefighters to arrive. Officials are still trying to figure out how this all began. But according to uh, reports citing staff and children, the orphanage had been using candles because the building's generator was broken. Authorities are now working to support and rehouse those surviving children.